I'm Phil Marriott. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Lots of stuff that we cover here. Sean Vickers has arrived. We've rolled out the red carpet. Thank you. That's so nice of you. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty fresh today, which uh, may I may not have been so fresh on recent recordings, but <laughs> regular viewers may have may have clocked that. So yeah, I'm here. I'm in the room. <laughs> I've been mentioning the fact that we, you know, I've got a lot on this channel you're involved in a lot of that we're talking movies today of course but if you are new here we've got music and film soon we've got uh, an interview with Gus Gus the Atlantic electronic outfit I spoke to them just recently we've got flick flop continuing with season two we've been joined by some amazing guests baby lame we've had uh, bright light bright light we've got loads more coming as well for that retro cinema review show which I'm really enjoying and you nearly passed out on the last one no words Phil literally no words <laughs> you have got a lot on your plate though and of course you're doing unflopped you're back with a new series of that almost wrapping up though isn't it soon um we will we are in season four we're breaking for summer soon but there's still some episodes being dropped we've got some great special guests coming up on unflopped um so yeah it continues wherever you get your podcasts okay so movie review today it is a film called after love it's a really fascinating story you saw this a while ago so you might need to refresh your memory a little bit. I guess when we're talking about it, you will though. You'll you'll start to remember things. Yeah, I saw this at London Film Festival in October uh, of 2020, so last year. Uh, and I I absolutely loved it. I think it's brilliant. I think Aleem Khan is his debut film. It's just spot on. It's thoughtful. It's deep. It's, it's current. In some ways, it's quite urgent. It, it tells a story that we don't often see on the t on the on the big screen and the small screen. And it tells the story of a couple, Ahmed and uh, Mary Hussein. They live in Dover, uh, and Ahmed is a ferry ferry driver, ferry driver, ferry captain. Yeah, and obviously shuttles between Dover and Calais uh, across the Channel. And unexpectedly, Ahmed dies. And the story really follows what happens when Mary starts to really poke around and starts to kind of like start to pack up and compartmentalize um, Ahmed's death and find something that leads her on a journey across the channel. So she literally grabs her bag and her phone and she heads across the channel. Uh, and that's really where the, the crux of the story begins. Now that's unfair because we need to talk about Mary, but from a, from a narrative perspective, a lot goes on. I'm going to try not to do too many spoilers, if any, but a lot happens there. But this is the first feature length screenplay by this writer director. And I find that incredible because it's such a powerful piece of cinema and it's, it's a really confident piece of cinema as well. There's so much to talk about, but it stars Joanna Scanlon, who I thought was incredible in, well, I mean, way back in Spaced, because she was part of Spaced with Simon Pegg, but also more recently for, uh, for The Accident. I don't know if you saw that with um, Sarah Lancashire, a drama set in, in Wales, and that um, was really powerful stuff. And she was brilliant because she played the, uh, the friend, the mother of one of the daughters who died in this accident, this big explosion in Wales. And she was fantastic in that. She's been in movies, but more more so, we, we recognise her in TV series, I think. She's done a lot of dramas and comedies on TV. So I love the fact that she's in something that's on the big screen. A lot of stuff with Simon Pegg. I loved her in The Thick of It. Yes. Armando Iannucci. I mean, absolutely brilliant and hilarious in that role. To call her a late bloomer would be, would be incorrect, but there's been heavier, bigger, more cinematic roles that have come later on, and rightly so, because... Um, she is phenomenal as the role in the role of Mary in this um, in this story. I mean, really quite powerful. And some really um, some of the scenes, especially when she's over over on the French side of the of the Channel, so powerful and really do stay with you. I think what's interesting here is that Mary's loosely based loosely based on Alim Khan's mother and the idea of a white woman Muslim convert wearing a scarf, being the protagonist in the centre of film, is rare, if ever. You don't see that. So the fact that Aleem Khan has, has positioned Joanna Scanlon into this into this kind of protagonist role is already unique. So, yeah, we talk about what happens when she goes across the channel, but Mary's character, standalone, is, is new in a way to the way that we watch films and cinema and, and understand that character, which I thought was incredibly powerful. I think about my own sister. So I was saying to you earlier, for my sister is a white woman Muslim convert. She married a man uh, from Pakistan. She is now a practicing uh, Muslim. 
Um, and that happened in the late 80s, early 90s. So when you see Mary and Ahmed, you know, living in Dover as a Muslim couple, you realize that um, Mary will have made commitments to that relationship, which will have been hard. And I think that's where you get this very interesting juxtaposition of a very different life over the channel. And that's difficult. Um, and so I found that all quite amazing because he did quite a lot of hard work because mm. this, the script is in English, French and Arabic, but there's also not a lot of words in this film. So I think it works so hard, the visual cues, the way it's set up. I think he does, I just say it's his debut. I think it's really cracking. I found that really fascinating because it made me think about people that have gone through diff, you know, similar experiences to what was shown on screen. I also like the pacing of the film. You mentioned the fact that you know sometimes you don't get a lot of dialogue and I love that because it's a really slow pace. But also, I think it was more powerful for that reason because we mentioned this in, in reviews that we've done before where grief has, you know, it, it is different for different people. Yeah, I mean, she's made a commitment to love and to her husband. And I think at times she feels betrayed by that because he may or may not have made different commitments to love and what that means. And there's a lot about identity in this film and how we identify with the people around us and what that means and what that stands for. And that's what I found super interesting without giving too much away. You know, you look at the character, you look at Genevieve. Uh, I'm not going too much into Genevieve's character, but a very different woman with a very different, a very different moral, out, moral outlook. Uh, and a very different way of living. It's about, it's an interesting piece about identity across the, these two ladies. Yeah, I, I found that super interesting. I, and I got a sense of frustration. And that coupled with loss, because frustration is part of the grief process, but doubly so, where you suddenly realize something other. There's an otherness about this film, regardless of the character. So whatever person you put yourself into in this film, there's an otherness that they're experiencing. And that's really clever. Absolutely, because these are two women that live just 20 miles apart, you think about it, from Dover to Calais. Yet, you know, they have this connection, but they have very different lives. But there's that connection that brings them together for wrong reasons. It's brilliant how those two characters connect mm. like that, and you see, you see their lives kind of coming together. But also, you know, splintering at the same time. But, you know, I just... Uh, yeah, I thought brilliantly played as well. I mean, the performances in this film. I've got to give credit to Talid Talid Aris. Talid, Talid Aris. Yeah, amazing. He plays a Playing young character Solomon. in this film. You know, he gave this role. He's all, I think. It was a really emotive performance. I thought he was terrific. I thought they were all terrific, but, you know, yeah. he was a real standout for me as well. Yeah, I agree. When you think about this, there's probably four main characters. So you've got four main characters, two locations, and a very light script. And so you're a bit like, how's this going to roll out? But it's so, you take so much from it. As I said, I saw it in October last year and it's, I feel like I can talk about it because it's, it, it, a lot stayed with me. I thought that there's an interesting power dynamic between the two ladies. And when then when you bring in, you bring in Solomon, as you say, played by Talid Addis, that relationship in itself, forget the rest of the narrative, is like a masterclass in kind of like, I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was so wonderful and so at times really quite harrowing you know how how, how this situation did occur because it the situation isn't that bonkers when you think about it 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 could quite easily happen you know Natalie Richard who plays Genevieve and Joanna Scanlon I just thought that was they're they're like compare and contrast yeah there's cultural differences there's differences in outlook. But then there are things that make them so similar. I think that's a great kind of masterclass in, in, just, in human observation. Absolutely. The hairs are standing on, on my arms right now because I'm thinking of a couple of scenes. The cinematography in itself is, is beautiful as well, but there's that wide panning shot right at the very end mm. without saying anything more than that. But yeah. that, that has stayed with me. And also the dinner scene as well where, where Mary is, is, is making dinner. It's so beautiful because it's t two people coming together that you know, have a connection. But there's also that rift that is causing destruction all around them. And it's it's that contrast, isn't it? Because, you know, so many people have that in their lives and with experiences that, you know, where, where, where there's dark experiences, there's a lot of light as well. And I think he captures the, the contrast of that brilliantly. So Aleem Khan doesn't speak French, but a large part of the film is set in France. And so he... If my understanding is correct, he leaned on the French producers and then 
allowed Genevieve and Solomon, the characters, to kind of work through the script to make it feel real. I find that amazing. Joanna Scanlon has goes through the call to prayer. She doesn't speak Arabic. And apparently she listened to a recording of Aleem's mother doing the call to prayer, uh, which I find amazing. Aleem Khan doesn't speak Arabic. He, he does know the call to prayer, but he speaks English and doesn't speak French. So all of those things should should create something that's chaotic. And actually, it's not at all. It feels it feels very considered. Obviously, the script has been written that way, but the way that it's delivered, the way that the acting steps into that and, and assists it, I found amazing. And so as I've read more about this, I'm, I've been more blown away, really, about the outcome. Yeah, it all felt very genuine to me. It felt, you know, it felt like a real a real experience that these people were going through. I didn't feel like they were acting. That's again, you know, again, I've mentioned this before in reviews where I feel like I'm part of that scenario and I don't feel like they're playing for the camera. I can really believe it. And it feels like a real, you know, like a real event that's happening. There is a, a queer element to this as well, because obviously this is a queer filmmaker who has put a, a queer experience into this film. Again, something we can't talk about. It's a major plot part, but it does, you know, it proves that, you know, Mary is a really beautiful person in many ways and a very thoughtful and respectful person. And I just love how that was also part of this part of this story. Yeah, a, a, a queer producer, director, writer, and, and a talent. And so I think certainly want to certainly watch, if not, if you're not already watching, want to certainly watch, because um, I think there's something quite incredible about this directorial debut across the board. So um, yeah, I was m mega impressed. I read somewhere earlier that the director, um, Aline, wanted to make a film out of his um, experience of existing between two worlds and in mm. two skins as well, because this is a writer-director of mixed English-Pakistani heritage as well, two cultures, it's Muslim and gay, and obviously that is why there is that that, that gay element in there, and I, I just thought that was great, because obviously it was different characters, it was different people, but he was, you know, it was it was something that could be talked about. I like I like his process because he built out the character of Mary based on lived experience, and then he kind of supplanted that character into a storyline that may or may or may not be fantastical. So once he built out the narrative of Mary, he then said, "I can move Mary into these kind of things, setups, set pieces, and see what happens." And I found that really really intriguing because you're right, you're taking this white woman Muslim convert of a certain age. And you're basically saying, this is how she's existed. This is how I've built out this character and this narrative. And now I'm going to move that character and I'm going to place him into something quite different and see what happens as it rolls out. And I think that's brilliant. I absolutely loved it. I found it a really powerful piece of cinema that made me think. Four. Four stars for me. It's four stars for me. It is called After Love. Highly recommended by us here at Boys on Film. Thank you very much for watching. Good to see you, Sean. Don't forget to like sure. and subscribe. And we will return with some kind of content, whether it's flip flop, boys on film, or unpacked. Ah! <laughs> it's all fun, though. <laughs> we love something. it. <laughs> See you soon.